Welcome. Let me tell you about the Natural Flood Management Program and how it came around and what we're planning to do. Now, obviously, this is quite a complex topic, and it's come about basically because pet level has been flooding, and the Environment Agency and a lot of science has gone on that's shown one of the most effective things you can do to prevent flooding is return land in the catchment to a natural state which holds water back so that's what essentially natural flood management is the natural flood brand management program was put together by the environment agency and um, myself and our neighbours here at Mary Dams had a meeting, the landowners, and we agreed to um, apply for that programme. And we were thankfully um, successful. And we've been awarded nearly £400,000 to do this programme. And we're well, going to explain what we're going to do. So the first thing is natural uh, flood management is stuff like this. This is known as a leaky dam, and it essentially means when it floods, it holds back the water. It uses natural processes to increase resilience. So uh, natural processes are just how water flows through land, the vegetation, the trees, the the form, the three-dimensional form of land, how that can hold back water. It mimics natural functions in that it not only does it hold back the water, it, it purifies it. You know, essentially we're being like little beavers. And what that does is it slows the flow, it stores water, and it takes out the energy of water. That's important because it's that energy of water that makes water flow faster, creating a flood event. Here we can see a natural flood management system in action. We want upland peaty soils, deep, dense peaty soils that are full of the type of vegetation that holds on water. We want natural broadleaf woodland that's got a lot of vegetation in the understory. Then we look at ravines where they can be dammed just like a beaver would. We can look at ponds and runoff management where you can actually turn the water to right angles to the natural flow of water. Look at more types of ponds offline storage where the water goes out of the river system and stores somewhere else. And then you look at the floodplain itself. How can you actually slow that flow in the floodplain? What are the benefits of natural flood management? Well, it's a resilient ecosystem. It can absorb climate change far better. You create lots of bugs and beasties Animals like water voles, dragonflies, butterflies, all kinds of animals will increase in an area where you've created natural flood management. It brings a community together in that you have to work together because it's everybody's responsibility to solve flooding. Because the flooding, if you drain one bit of land, you're actually going to cause flooding in the next farmer's field down the stream so everybody's got a responsibility if we all do a little bit of work then we work together and we create a better outcome it improves water quality when you've got that water going through natural vegetation it takes out sediments it takes out bugs and beasties it takes out dangerous bacteria and it, it takes out any impurities in the water it reduces erosion further down the land so you take an energy out of the water it stops carrying soil away it reduces flood risk obviously and keeping that water back also helps the nutrients of farmland it helps you grow better crops without having to use fertilizers so lots of benefits now to for us to get this grant we had to deliver what's known as eligible natural flood management measures we had to demonstrate that this project would actually benefit flood risk we had to show that it was going to be value for money and one of the ways this is going to be value of monies is there was a study that showed that tried to put to put in 
um, you know, uh, concrete flood defences to protect the village would cost well over six million pounds. So, and we may be able to achieve that natural that flood risk reduction by spending a fraction less than a tenth of that amount. It has to be aligned with all the local flood risk management plans and strategies that are in. We had to commit to that we would monitor the project both for biodiversity and for how that water flows down the valley and we would have to be able to maintain it for the future. So what does this mean for us? The project's aiming to look at how natural flood management can help local communities prevent peak water levels for farmers, local residents, all the land managers and organisations and businesses that are down the stream that are um, at risk of flooding. We hope to hold the water on the valley sides of the Marsham Valley and then have it released slowly and that will release the heights of the flood. And we do that in two ways. The most important way is ground cover of woodlands and grasslands, the heathlands. They absorb the water and they take the energy out of that water as it flows down the hillsides. And then we're also going to create some leaky dams and these structures hold back the water and help create wet peaty woodland that will over time greatly increase the ability to slow that flow. The first step we have to do, which is mostly going to be over the next three to four months up until September 2024, is gather the scientific evidence, baseline surveys of how water flows through the area and also a biodiversity survey. We're also doing a lot of complicated modeling. We've engaged a, a team of experts who help us modeling where we can best achieve these flood uh, reduction uh, habitats and structures. We have to form a charity. We have to have an organization that can administer these funds. And the, the landowners of the area have come together to quote, form what we're calling the Future Landscapes Trust, where not only are we going to run this project, but we hope that expertise will help run other projects in the future. And this year, we've got to install scientific monitoring equipment, as I said, and we need to reach out to other landowners and hopefully show why this could be beneficial. Now, why are we doing this? Well, Marsham Brook down at pet level, it floods. Last year, it flooded pretty badly. We can see that it flooded um, quite badly. It flooded about 40 homes. And here's a video of some of the flooding. It was pretty devastating. It's frightening to have your houses flooded. It's got huge problems um, with, you know, not being able to live, financial costs, health risks, all that kind of stuff. So let's have a look at the rainfall. We've already done a series of analysis. So let's have a look at the rainfall in our area. Now we've commissioned this study that analyzed the rainfall and you can see we can get the data and it tells us lots of things. But when we plot that data, a lot of people think flooding is because we're getting more rainfall. Certainly last year, 2023, we had more rainfall. This blue line is uh, accumulated rainfall. But we didn't have the maximum rainfall. We've had it previously. And when you actually do a statistical analysis, you can see overall rainfall has been dropping both in the maximum daily amount and its accumulation. Now, this is really complicated science because flooding happens when you have a few days of heavy rainfall, a clustering effect, as they call it. And, but it also happens not just because of rainfall, but how, how that water then flows across the land after it rains. And these two things come together to create the unprecedented flooding, which shouldn't be happening, but it is. So it's not just rainfall, it's probably not rainfall. The evidence is pointing that it is actually how the land absorbs water. So we know the rainfall amount is dropping. 
accumulation of rainfall, that's the total amount slightly dropping, we have to understand how fast the rainfall is dropping on the land and flowing into pet level. And that's what this scientific research will help us achieve. But we've got to look at the other factors, how drainage is happening around people's fields. Is uh, fair light, um, is, is the drains in fair light actually causing a problem? Certainly causing some problems and flooding and sewage and we have to make a proper scientific analysis of all this so this is what we talk about so if the blue blocks are the rainfall events and it takes a while for that water it takes a day or two for that water to flow all the way down to pet level and the green line graph shows what happens to the water levels within a town or a village down from the rainfall it peaks a few days later and the next graph shows you if you have a flood event where the water's not attenuated it's not stopped it's not slowed down you have a massive peak flow but you can flatten the curve as they say if we attenuate the rainfall and that means a far better habitats rich habitats and put in these leaky dams we can attenuate the rainfall flattening the curve so you get a far smaller peak flow which prevents people's houses from flooding and that's the whole object of what we're trying to do flatten the curve and make sure that the river or the brook never gets to the point that it actually floods the houses and this will be measured very scientifically and we'll be able to, even if we don't have a flood event, still measuring everything that's going on will allow us to say that we've protected these houses or we haven't. So how's this computer modeling being done? Well, we've got some fantastic people who've been looking at. Now, initially, this is a, a, a quick model I made when I first got here and started looking into it. I put the environmental agency's data on um, where water's flowing, and I put it into Google Maps and made this 3D model, and it showed where the water was collecting. But now we've engaged green curves, which is a really excellent um, set of hydrologists and fluvial, fluvial morphological analysis who can actually analyze all the data. And we've already started getting uh, lots of data from special drones and planes that fire little lasers down, and they can precisely measure where the ground is. And we can make a 3D map of the whole catchment. The red line shows the catchment. That's the point where the water goes into the Marsham Valley, or it flows out to somewhere else. So that's where we have to concentrate. And then we can look at the height and where the streams and the gullies actually accumulate. And as you can see, Mally Dams Wood is one of the major sources that we can actually prevent flooding from. Now, this little map has looked at where the water is going to be flowing the fastest. And that's what the, the dark colors are. Um, and that's telling us where we need to concentrate our efforts in. And as you can see, the area along this ridge here is one of the most important areas and this is where the the landowners have formed this partnership who own the land along this bank we also need to look at the other areas but this is the main area where we're going to have right in the middle here and i modeled this out in a map when i applied to show where the gullies were that we could put natural flood management and also where we can concentrate and the colored lines the yellow line shows the gullies we can concentrate uh, natural flood management in and the other colored line shows the land holdings of the partners as we try uh, to do work to do the achieve the natural flood management objectives so the analysis is going to measure at the rate at which water accumulates at pet level. It's going to tell us where best we can put structures and concentrate on habitat improvements. And it will also tell us at what point we think we can get to 
to actually stop pet level flooding. And that's a lot of number crunching that will tell us this. So how are we going to deliver the program? Well, what we've been up to is um, last year we developed and submitted our application. Those applications were a success and um, we were very fortunate to uh, win one of the these coveted spots to get the funding. Um, from March to December, we're busy going through a, a complicated process of developing the project, installing all of our monitoring equipment and working out a full business case that shows what we're doing and why it's important. So this scientific research directly feeds into our business case. And then in the, the next three years, we're going to deliver the project and we'll have substantial funds to deliver that. We have to prepare and sign lots of agreements. We need to engage more landowners, which Ollie and myself are doing. We need to engage the partnership, and this is what this presentation is about, and we will be delivering this presentation to lots of different groups. We've got to set up the finish setting up the governance arrangements of the um, Future Landscapes Trust, who are its trustees, its financial reporting requirements, all the boring stuff. We have to do that very properly. We're securing more resources. We're getting sponsorship and donations, not just from the Environment Agency, but we're getting lots of input. The RSPC is helping out by helping expand our woodland management team. Southern Water have come in with generous donations of expertise, equipment, and a cash donation of £30,000. And from all of this, we come up with a detailed design where best to put the natural flood management structures and where best to do the habitat management work. All this has to be written in a full business case that goes off to the Environment Agency. We then have to get all the licenses, permits, various assessments to make sure they've got the permission to do the things we have to do. We have to liaise with the local council, with the Environment Agencies, the other parts of it, and then we have to engage and plan our delivery. Now, in all these presentations, this is what to do if you do are at risk of flooding. So I've got to, uh, for the um, natural flood management, um, for our friends at the Environment Agency, what to do if there's a flooding. And if you want to get any more information, contact me at my um, private email address, Peter Smith Rewilding, or Ollie Hunter. Um, and we'll give out his details a bit later, and then you can find out more. Thank you.